Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do the real review for the LG G7. Now I'm gonna try to make this video as quick as I can, but y'all know I don't like doing too much fancy editing, so it is what it is. Now I'm gonna start off by answering three questions. Number one, is the G7 worth the price? And the answer is yes. Now do I like the price? No, and we'll talk about that in a second, but is it worth the price? And the answer is easily yes. Now it checks all of the boxes that any typical flagship phone would have. You got wireless charging, always on display, water resistant, quad HD display, everything that you want on a flagship phone, you got it on the G7, so it's definitely worth the price. Next, if you got an LG G6, should you upgrade and get a G7? And the answer is yes. Now I said this before and I'll say it again. Whenever you upgrade your phone, sometimes you're gonna get minor upgrades and sometimes you're gonna get major upgrades. Well, if you got a G6 and you go into the G7, now you're getting major upgrades. Now, it depends on which region you was at. I'm in the US, so my G6 had wireless charging and no quad deck. Now, people in other countries, y'all had the quad deck and no wireless charging. Well, now with the G7, you got quad deck and wireless charging standard. Now you also go from Snapdragon 821 to Snapdragon 845 processor. Now even if you don't know what that means, take it from me, the phone is a lot smoother and it runs a lot faster. Now you also got a bigger display, a brighter display, you got better battery life, the speaker, the speaker on the G6 and the G7 is night and day. That might be your main reason for upgrading. If you're heavy on media, you're gonna want that speaker, the speaker on the G7 is the truth. But my biggest upgrade for the G6 to the G7 is the camera. Now you're gonna hear me use this term a lot in this video, AI, artificial intelligence. The AI camera on the G7 is the second best one in the game, right behind the Huawei Mate RS and the P20 Pro. This AI camera is the truth, and I'll show you what it looks like. Not to mention you get the Google button. So if you got a G6 and you're thinking about upgrading to the G7, it's definitely worth the upgrade. Last question. If I had to choose between the OnePlus 6 and the G7, which phone would I go with? That's the easy answer for me, I'm going with the G7. You got expandable memory, wireless charge, you got an always on display. Now even though my G, uh, my OnePlus 6, it does have an always on display, I know what y'all OnePlus fanboys getting ready to say, so stop typing. Oh, the OnePlus had an always on display, but they removed it, guess what? That means you don't got an always on display. If you got a Rolex and you walk around outside and you get jacked and somebody walk up on you next week and say, yo, what's up, you got a Rolex? The answer is no. You can't say, yeah, I had one before, but somebody stole it. No, the answer is no, you don't have it. So there's no always on display. With the G7, you got a real actual IP rating. Now again, I know what y'all OnePlus fanboys getting ready to say, oh, I watched this person's video, I watched that person's video, they submerged the phone and it still works. That doesn't mean it's water resistant, that just means that that person got lucky. And I'll tell y'all a quick story. I had a Blackberry, I dropped it in the puddle, took it out, and it still worked. So now I'm running around telling everybody, guess what, the Blackberry's water resistant, Blackberry's water resistant. Then I try to show one of my boys, I dunked it in a bucket of water, and guess what, it didn't work. So. If they're not advertising it as water resistant, it depends what kind of baller you are, you might have money to throw away, I don't. So if it's not advertised as water resistant, I'm not gonna be going swimming with that phone. So you got water resistance on your G7, not on the OnePlus 6. The speaker, the speaker on the G7 is twice as good as the speaker on the OnePlus 6. And my favorite feature, why I would say I would go with the G7 over the OnePlus 6, the wide angle camera and the artificial intelligence built into the camera in the G7 is killing the OnePlus 6. Not to mention you got all the gimmicks, you got the knock code, you got the Google button, you got the fully customizable LG UI. If it's a choice for me, like I said, between OnePlus 6 and G7, go with the G7, trust me. Not to mention Quad HD display, versus 1080p. Now, some people don't care about that, some people do. Now, with that being said, there's always gonna be some things that I don't like, so let's talk about those first. Number one, the price. Now, let's all clear our throats, let's all say this at the same time. <clears throat> the price is too goddamn high. Now, look, if you go to different carriers, you're gonna get different prices. Sprint is the worst. I sprint, they want 792 bucks. 
That's off contract. That's well over 800. Now Verizon, US Cellular, T-Mobile, you're looking at 750 bucks plus tax. That's damn near 800 bucks. That price is too goddamn high. Now in this day and age, when you got phones like the OnePlus 6, you got the Huawei, the Honor View 10, if you're not heavy in the phone game like that, and you're just using your phone to stalk your favorite celebrities on Twitter and keep atting them, hoping for a response, you're checking out all the buns on Instagram, you're on Facebook, getting into your race wars, sending emails and text messages, taking a few pictures here and there, adding 100 filters to them anyway, there's no reason that you need an $800 phone. All right, in this day and age, you could be just as satisfied paying 500 bucks for a OnePlus 6, 64 gig version, or the Honor View 10. Now look, LG, this is a message for LG. Now LG had a major debacle back in the days with the G4. Let's all keep it real now. When you think about LG, what's the first word that comes to your mind? Boot loop. Let's, let, let's just keep it real. Anytime you think about LG in the back of your mind, the first word that pops up is boot loop. Now to me, that's kind of silly because y'all know my motto, you're only as good as your last product. The LG G6, the G5, the V10, the V20, V30. No boot loop issues. But so many people are scarred with the LG boot loop issue that it's kind of it's kind of a stigma attached to LG. So if I was LG, if I worked for LG's marketing team or their sales team or whatever, you got to make some repercussions for that debacle. Look at Samsung. Remember when Samsung, the Galaxy Note 7, the exploding battery? Y'all remember the Galaxy Fireball 7? What did Samsung do immediately after that? They made reparations. I, when they came out with the Galaxy Note 8, I don't know how much I paid for yours, but my Galaxy Note 8, I traded in my Note 7. I paid, I think, 450 bucks. I got a free Gear VR, a free uh, 360 camera, free wireless charger. That's how you do it. LG never made repercussions, so people still kind of got that stigma to your head. Now, if you think about Galaxy, you don't think about batteries anymore. Nobody cares about the Galaxy battery anymore, and that was just last year. That wasn't even like five years ago. The LG boot loop issue, that was mad years ago. But people still talking about it. So to pay 800 bucks for a phone that still has that stigma, I think that's too much. LG, they should have came out with this phone for 650 bucks. They would have killed OnePlus. Right, they would have cornered the market on that one. I don't know why they, choose to, why they chose to go with that savage price, but it is what it is. My bad, y'all. I had to take a phone call. Now, I'm making this video early in the morning, so I'm kind of working at the same time, but we're going to push through. All right, so I'm not feeling the price. Next, storage. Now, this phone comes in 64 gigs of storage for damn near 800 bucks. That's not enough. Look at the OnePlus 6. 256 gigs worth of storage for under 700 bucks. That's a win. Now, if I'm paying 800 bucks, I want maximum storage. Look at companies like Apple. You see they phased out 16 gigs and 32 gigs. 64 gigs needs to be phased out. Phone should start at 128 gigs and 256 gigs. And after that, 512 and do what you do. All right, so 64 gigs of storage, not really feeling that. Next, the single fire and speak at the bottom. Now we're gonna talk about this speaker. It is amazing, but think about how much more dope this phone would have been with dual speakers because that one speaker on the bottom is sick. It's crazy, but if they had another speaker on the top, it would have been game over for pretty much everything else. Now we're gonna talk about that speaker in a second. I just wish it had dual speakers. Next, the Google button. Now you got the Google button on the side. My same complaint with that on this side, <laughs> oh, on this side right here. Yeah. My same complaint with that is the same complaint I had with the Galaxy. You can't remap it. Now you hit it once, you open up your Google Now, you hit it twice, you open up your Google Lens, but imagine how dope that would have been if you could hit that button, open up Instagram, hit that button, open up your favorite contact, hit that button, open up your YouTube, the apps that you use most or the functions that you use most. Now that could be a software update. So LG, if you're watching this video, we want to be able to remap that button. I ain't having a physical button that I don't use because I don't really use Google now like that. So I got a physical button right here that I really don't use. Not feeling that. Next, the battery. Now we're gonna talk about this battery is 3000 milliamps. You would think that it's trash, but it's really not trash. But the thing I don't like about it is I wish it would have been more. Now I'm kind of spoiled because I've been using the P20 Pro and the Mate RS. 
that 4,000 milliamp battery never dies. I've never been anywhere using that phone and had to worry about battery life. I had to worry about battery life plenty of times with the G7 after heavy use. Now the battery life is excellent, but again, for 800 bucks, we should have had a 4,000 milliamp battery. I don't care if it makes the phone a little bit thicker, I'll take a little bit of extra thickness for extra uh, 1,000 milliamps of battery. All right, so you know they call me Petty Roosevelt, so there's a couple of petty things that I gotta complain about, so let's talk about those real quick. Number one, LCD display. Now, if I had to choose between LCD and AMOLED, I'm always gonna go with AMOLED. The colors just look more vibrant. The blacks look a lot blacker. You get better battery life. Now, this is all subjective. You might like LCD, but I'm always gonna prefer an AMOLED display. Next, IR Blaster. Now, if we was talking about a company like Apple that never had IR blasters, I wouldn't care. But LG was one of the pioneers with the IR Blaster phones. The G5 was one of my favorites. And LG had one of the dopest smart remote UIs. Let's all start that hashtag again. Bring back the IR Blaster. Now, I'll tell y'all a quick story. I went to Disney World a couple of weeks ago, and I was being a complete fat ass. I shout out to Team Fat Ass. I was eating pizza and ice cream for breakfast. I was going crazy. Then I found out they had a gym in the complex, so to feel less guilty, I decided to go to the gym. Now, when I'm up in the gym, all of the TVs, they're behind these little panels, and they're all playing the Disney Channel. Now, I don't know about you, but trying to lift some heavy weights and, and listening to the, the Lion King and watching the Princess Snow White, that's not really helping me. All right, I want to watch ESPN. So I pulled out my Mate RS, pointed at the TV, synced it up, changed the channel. Certified win. Hashtag bring back the IR blaster. And my last little petty gripe, the color choices. Now, depending on which carrier you go to, you got different color options. From Sprint, you only got silver and black. From uh, US, Cellular, US Cellular, you only got silver. I think uh, T-Mobile, you get the, a choice of the purple one. It depends. Whatever, you know, you got to look for yourself. But the point is, every carrier should have all four color choices. If you want Sprint and you want the purple Thanos version, you should be able to get that. If you're on T-Mobile and you want the blue one, you should be able to get that. All right, so that's my little gripes right there. Now, let's get into everything that I do like. Number one, the build quality. The build quality in these phones is A1. All right, they all got Corning Gorilla Glass 5. They milled R810, uh, drop test approved. The look, the feel, y'all yeah, know I gotta say it. Let's all say it together. Feels good in the hands, ladies. You know the procedures. But all jokes aside, build quality on this is excellent. Everybody rocking the glass back phones nowadays, look how beautiful this looks. Now let me just get a little wipe down so you can see. Whew, sick. All right, so build quality, no problems. Y'all know I'm a slam boy, so I'll be dropping my phones mad heavy. You don't see no scratches. All right, so the build quality is there, and it is IPX rated, so it's water resistant and dust resistant. Next. The power button. Now look at the G6 real quick. Remember the power button was built into the fingerprint sensor, so it had that mushy feel to it? I hated that. I hate when you put your finger on it and you feel the fingerprint sensor move a little bit. I don't like that. Now you got an actual power button. All right, so you don't have to touch the fingerprint sensor if you don't want to, because you can use your facial unlock. Now your fingerprint sensor is nice and stiff. Giggity. My bad, y'all, my phone is ringing like crazy. All right, so where was we? Next, let's talk about the fingerprint sensor, the facial unlock, and the knock code. Now, that's three different ways to open up your phone. First, the fingerprint sensor. Now, look how fast this is. All you have to do is tap it, opens right up. You don't have to press it and hold it. One little tap, it's gonna pop open. No lag, no bugs, no hiccups. Works 100% of the time. All right, so I'm definitely feeling that. Next, let's try the facial unlock. Look how fast that is. You see, not, no fingers. You see all, all five of my fingers. Not as fast as the OnePlus, but just as dope. Next, you got the knock code. Now, this is one of my favorite LG UI features. Knock your phone on. Now, you don't have to power up the display. You can do it right from the always-on display, and you can do it while the phone is on the table. Now this is perfect for when you're in your meetings and you wanna skim through the gram real quick on the clandestine status, do it like this. Now you don't have to pick the phone up. If you get really nice with it, you could do the two finger knock. 
Now, I'm pretty nice. I was playing the other day, able to do it real quick like that. But this way, now I can open up my phone, take it right over to the gram, and get busy. All right, so I'm feeling that. Next, let's talk about the always on display. Let me get a little wipe down. Always on display. Now, the G7 and the Galaxy S9, one of the best things about the always on display is you can add a picture. Now, I don't know if y'all can really see that, but I got a little picture on deck. So not only does it look better, but it is fully functional. You got the time, the date. You see, I got some notifications. So I got a YouTube, got a text message, got my battery percentage. If I swipe over, I can hit the button, take me right to my camera, hit the next button, take a screenshot and start writing on the screen for a little memo. I can turn my Wi-Fi on and off, go straight to vibration on and off, turn the Bluetooth on and off and immediate access to the flashlight. Then if I swipe over again, if I had some music playing, maybe I had some Bluetooth headphones on, or I had the phone connected to a speaker, I can hit my media controls right from the always on display. So fully functional, always on display. That is a major go. Next, wireless charge. Now I know some of y'all gonna think that's a gimmick, but what do you think is easier? Coming in the house and plugging your phone in, or coming in the house and going just like this and walking away? Think about that for a second. Now when I'm ready to dip, bye. Come in the house, drop the phone on, keep it moving. Wireless charge, yes, yeah, it's, it's a convenience. It's not as fast as regular plug-in charging. But if you, if you have a dope desktop setup and you don't want to see any wires, or you got a nice phone that has it always on display, maybe you're watching some videos, you can be charging your phone at the same time. Take it off, keep it moving. Wireless charge is a go. Next. Now, it's a shame that I even got to bring this up. Headphone jack. Now, this is pretty dope, especially if you've got an old school car that doesn't have Bluetooth and you got an auxiliary cable. You don't have to worry about that little dongle headphone jack on deck. Next, let's talk about the display. Quad HD display. It looks beautiful. Now, on a side note, if y'all notice the uh, moving wallpaper, if you want to set this, just take a video. Uh, go to your settings and assign it as your wallpaper. And you got your motion uh, motion lock screen wallpaper. You can actually move it around also. Quad HD display that looks beautiful. Now, I would rather have the AMOLED panel, but it is what it is. Now, I know people are going to ask, what about the notch? You could go to settings and you can remove the notch, but why do that? It just looks better to me. This is one of those things that has to grow on you. Anybody that doesn't have a notch phone, you hate the notch until you get it. Once you get it, you're going to realize that you actually like it because look how much more display you got. Instead of just a black bar on the top, I'd rather have just a little black bar right there and everything else, full screen display. All right, so the display on this, A1, no problems. Next, now let's talk about one of my favorite features of this phone, the boosted display. All right, the boosted brightness. Check this out. Now I'm gonna go to brightness. This is max brightness. Now watch when I hit boost. Look how bright that is. Now just for comparison, let me grab another phone so you can see the difference. All right, so check this out. Here's a Galaxy S9 Plus with the display on max brightness. Here's the G7 with the display on max brightness. Now the G7 is already brighter, but check this out. Let's activate the boost. Look at the difference. Now imagine if you was outside in the direct sunlight and you're trying to read that important email. Which one are you going to want to use? The G7. Now I know a lot of people are going to say that feature only lasts for three minutes, but how long are you really going to need your phone to be that bright? That's made for when you're outside and you're in direct sunlight and you want to check some stuff, activate the boost. You're not going to be sitting out in the sun trying to watch a movie with max brightness. It would kill your battery if you did that. So that's a cool little boost feature right there. Next, let's talk about the speaker. Now the speaker on this phone, let me pull up a video real quick. Let's take it over to Bike Life. Listen to the speaker. Now it's only bottom firing, but it has that boom box effects. So when you put it on the table, listen to that. Now, just for comparison, I'm going to pull up um, the same video on the Galaxy, and we'll see. All right, now check this out. Here's the Galaxy.
You see what I meant by dual speakers? Now the Galaxy sounds louder because you're hearing sound from the top and the bottom. But sound quality wise, the G7 sounds better. You can feel the bass shake in the phone. Listen to this. Wait for that bass drop. The phone is shaking in my hand. Now the thing about this is, depending on what surface you put the phone at, it's gonna sound better. So right now I got it on this table, it doesn't sound that great, but if I put it on top of a hollow box, this speaker would sound incredible. My only gripe is it should have had a speaker on the top. Other than that, the speaker on this is banging. Next, let's talk about the quad deck. Now when you plug your headphones in, you're gonna notice you got DTS X 3D sound and you got the Hi-Fi quad deck. Now I can't demonstrate that because you're gonna have to have headphones on, but trust me when I tell you, anybody that's ever had an LG phone or a phone that has a Hi-Fi deck built in, you know what I'm saying. All right, it's gonna make your music sound twice as good. Now again, this is a feature that should be on all of the flagship phones. That's kind of why I say this phone is worth the price, even though I don't like the price. That quad deck, if you listen to wired headphones, you're gonna love that feature. And on a side note, if you plug this in your car using the aux cable, it's gonna boost the sound also. All right, so the quad deck, that's a major go. Next, let's talk about performance. No lag on this. Multitasking is a go. Let's open up uh, Google. We'll do some split screen. Let's see uh, YouTube at the same time. Get that music popping off. Scroll through. Look how fast that is. No lag. I got a bunch of apps open in the background. Look at Thanos. Why they had to do my boy dirty like that? Let's exit out of this. Uh, we'll clear all. Clear all. You got your Google inbox feature, your picture in picture. Performance wise on this, no problems at all. You got the Snapdragon 845, the latest and the greatest. I haven't had any lag, haven't had any issues, haven't had any boot loops, no problems. So performance on this, I'm giving this an A1. Next, let's talk about the battery. Now you got a 3000 milliamp battery that features quick charge. Now, if you're anything like me, as soon as you heard 3000 milliamps, the first thing that popped in your mind was quad HD display, hi-fi deck, boosted brightness. Other flagships got big giant 4000 milliamp batteries. This one's gonna be trash. Well, I'm happy to say the LG G7 battery is definitely not trash. Now with moderate usage and you tweak the settings, you can easily get through an eight hour day. Now, of course, I'm a savage. I'll be having a phone on max brightness. I'll be using the, uh, the boost brightness feature a lot. I'm on the gram all day. So I had to charge halfway through the day, but it's right on par with some of the other flagships that don't have the 4,000 milliamp batteries like the P20 and the RS. These phones don't die. Everything else, the way I use my phone, I gotta charge halfway through the day. So this is right on par. Now, like I said, if I play with the settings, I can easily rock an eight hour day. My bad, y'all, they're killing me with the calls today. Where was we? Let's talk about the floating dock. Now you see that little arrow on the side? You can move that up or down, left or right. Put it wherever's convenient for you. Now check this out. Once you open it up, you got a bunch of quick toggles. So let's go through those. The first one, here's your memo pad. So I can either type, let's do uh, call Dave, or I could write. Save that right to my memos. The next one, if I hit that, that's gonna take a selfie or a regular photo. The third one, here's all my floating dock settings. Let's keep it moving. Next, we got a screenshot that I can actually write on. So say I wanted to highlight one of these apps, I could circle it, draw a little arrow, save it right to my gallery, and send it as a message. The next one, that's a scroll shot. So say I'm on Facebook and there's a long thread and I wanna copy the whole conversation, hit that and it'll scroll shot the whole page. The next one, this is a square. Now the square is perfect for Instagram when you wanna repost a meme or you wanna repost a picture, do the square, just adjust it to the size and then save it, post it right to your gram. And the next one is the GIF. Now I'll show you how to rock this one. This is just like on the Galaxy phones. Let's go to YouTube. I right, say I wanted to make a GIF out of this bike life video. Put a little square, we'll hit record. We'll save this for about five seconds. 
All right, we'll stop it. And this is what it looks like. You see that GIF? We'll hit save. Now I'll show y'all, I'll show y'all something that I made. We go through the camera apps. Now you got your media controls. All right, so if I had uh, my phone connected to a Bluetooth speaker or I had some headphones on, I can control all my media. And the last one, this is all your quick contacts. Hit one button, call all your favorite contacts. All right, so the floating dock, that's a major go. Next, let's talk about the Google button. Now, same thing as the Galaxy Bixby button, but Google is infinitely better than Bixby. So one long press. What time is it? 1048. Now, if you press it twice, it's going to take you to Google Lens. All right, we'll tap on this object and see if it works. Looks like a mobile phone. All right, so that works fine. No problems with that. Next. Now, let's talk about my number one favorite feature of the LG G7, the camera. The camera on this phone is banging. Now, if y'all watch my videos, you know when I rate cameras, I got three ratings. Trash, good, and banging. Now, there's different levels to each. This camera is definitely banging. Now, it's not the best camera in the world, but it's banging. Now, between the G7 and these two other Huawei phones, these are the only phones that I got that have the artificial intelligence built into the camera. Now, the easiest way for me to explain what artificial intelligence is without getting into too much tech spec mumbo jumbo is when you pull out your phone and you're ready to take a picture, the computer is going to make your picture look better. So if you point your phone at the sky and you take a picture, the computer knows it's the sky and it's going to make the sky look even more blue. You point, a picture, uh, you point your phone at a cat, it knows that it's a cat and not a dog, so it's going to make the cat look more fluffy. You point at a dog, it's going to make the dog look more detailed. It knows the difference between green leaves, green trees, and green fruit. Artificial intelligence in the camera is not a gimmick. It blew me away. All right, now, the best impl uh, implementation I've seen was on the Huawei phones, but the LG is second best. Now, let me show you some pictures that I took. Now, these are just regular pictures, all right? No fancy waterfalls and all that. This is just regular pictures in the, in, uh, during my travels. All right, so I had a nice drink right there. Look at the details. Now, I'm going to show you where the artificial intelligence kicked in. Now, if I was, if I was uh, taking this picture live, it would say food. Look at the blue sky. Look at that. Now, you know the sky is not that blue. Now, look, let me say this. Some, now, you could turn the artificial intelligence on and off. Some people don't like that. You know the sky is really not that blue. Some people want the picture to be more uh, true to life, more, uh, more color accurate. And then some people want the sky to be extra blue. I like it like this. Especially if you're posting a picture on Instagram, you're gonna go to the filters, you're gonna try to tweak it and make it look good. You don't gotta do that. All you gotta do is point and shoot. Look at that blue sky. Look at that water. Look at this one. Now you, now you see that the, the computer knows that I was focusing more on the green, so the sky is not as blue now. And look at the green. This is insane. Look at this one. Look at, look at the colors on this. Beautiful photos. Oh, I do have a waterfall. <laughs> I said I'm not going to take any waterfall pictures. Here comes a nice waterfall. All right, this is the Mustang right here. Shout out to my daughter. I let her drive that. That's me looking like a douche. Look at these nighttime photos. Look at this one, right? Look at this nighttime photo. Artificial intelligence, once you pull out your phone and you're taking a picture at night, the computer knows that it's nighttime. It automatically puts it in low light mode. Beautiful. More drinks. All right, now this is, remember I told you you can make the gifts? All right, just a little gift I made. When people ask me what am I doing tonight, I just send them this little gift right here. This is exactly what I'm doing tonight. Here's another one I made. When people ask me what time I'm leaving work, this is exactly how I leave out of out of my job, just like this. <laughs> All right, look, look look at this picture. Now let me show you something real quick. We got to talk about this, the wide angle lens. All right, so my two favorite features of the camera is the artificial intelligence and the wide angle lens. So look at this picture right here. Now I'm just sitting in the car, I took a picture. Now I activate wide angle lens, didn't even move, look at the difference. You see that? Without moving, so this is a regular photo, hit the wide angle lens, look how much more you can see of the photo, all right? 
You get a look at that. Hit wide angle lens. Look how much more you can see. If you're into photography or you're heavy on social media and you post a lot of pictures and you hang out with your friends a lot, you're going to need that wide angle lens. You see? Check this out. This is regular. And then activate wide angle lens. Look at the difference. That's insane. Nighttime shot. My dude just copped the new X, X6M. I'm minimum hating. All right, that's a little video in the gym. We'll skip that. All right, let's, let's see a little driving footage. All right, now the video camera on this is excellent. Nice stabilization. Yeah, I see I was rocking that Meek Mills. Let's uh, keep it moving. All right, that was me playing around with white shoes. Y'all don't need to see that. Look, look at this picture. Now here's I'm, this is what I want to show you. Now this is with the artificial intelligence off. Look at look at Zerks. You see the brown. Now watch this. Look at the artificial intelligence on. Look how look at the difference in the brown. You see, you can see a little bit of the brown. Now when I turn the artificial intelligence on, it knows that it's a cat, so it made it look extra fluffy. Look at the difference in the brown. Crazy. Now, check this out. I'm going to show you again. Now, this is a regular photo. Watch when I activate the wide-angle lens. Look how much more of the photo you see. Regular, wide-angle lens. Let's keep it moving. All right, got some videos. All right, this is... Uh, now, look at the stabilization. Kind of reminds me of an iPhone footage. Nice and smooth. Walking around in the store <laughs> in the bodega on the hunt for them rainbow noodles. Look, here, here, here they come, here they come. But look how smooth this is. All right, let's exit out of that. Uh, more video. All right, this is just a nice daytime shot. Look at the colors. That wide angle. Let's see, um, a little highway action. Oh, matter of fact, I got a, I got a, I got a better video. Let me show you a, a better one. Let me see. Um, oh, check this out. Again, regular, wide angle. Regular, wide angle. Sick. I, totally sick. This is up in the airport. I seen this nice M5 in the parking lot. All right, check this out. Now look at this. Look at the video on this one. All right, let me let me turn it down so um, I don't kill y'all with the music. All right, look at this one. Now watch how smooth this video looks. Nice and smooth, right? Now I'm driving over 100 miles an hour. I was trying to get the camera to shake, not even shaking. Look how smooth that is. In these New York City streets. Hold up, I ain't hit, I ain't hit a buck yet. But well, you'll see, keep your eye on the little speedometer. Now this is early in the morning, ain't nobody on the road. All right, so calm down, young man. Check this out. Now the camera's not shaking at all. If you could drive doing a buck and the camera's not shaking, it's not gonna shake when you're walking around the hood making your little, vote, uh, you're making your little videos. Look at that. Beautiful. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the camera on this phone is a major, major, major go. Next. Now, let's talk about the lag factor. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being no lag at all, 10 being the laggiest phone in the world, I would give this a solid 2. Now, I haven't had any real lag yet. I do get an occasional hiccup when I'm going beast mode with a thousand and one apps open in the background at the same time and I'm multitasking and playing music. I will get a little occasional stutter here and there, but I wouldn't call it lag. I would call it more of a stutter. So this is basically a lag free experience, not as smooth as the Pixel 2 or the OnePlus, but basically lag free. All right, so let me wrap this up. Now, on the side note, 
This is the most editing you ever gonna see in one of my videos. I'm getting a thousand and one phone calls. My next door neighbor's doing construction. Every time I start talking, he starts drilling. This is exactly why I don't make videos in the daytime. But we gotta get through this. Let's finish this off with the floss factor. All right, so what is the floss factor? That means you got yourself a brand new LG G7. You go out somewhere, somebody got a Galaxy S9 Plus, somebody got a Huawei P20 Pro, somebody got an iPhone Plus, somebody got a Mate RS, somebody got an iPhone 10, somebody got a Pixel 2 XL. Where do you fit in on the food chain? Are you at the top of the food chain looking like a boss or are you in the bottom of the food chain looking like a peasant? Well, if you got a G7, you definitely on the top of the food chain. Now, don't get me wrong. You're not a lion, all right? You're not a tiger. You're not a panther. You kind of like a hyena. You know, you can hold your own. You get it done. But when the bosses come through, you definitely got to fall back. With that being said, now, y'all know, I'm just kidding. This is all subjective. You like what you like. At the end of the day, on a scale of 1 to 10, the LG G7 is a major, major, major go. Best part about this phone, the camera, the speakers, the display, that boost, that boosted brightness, and the quad deck. You also got your wireless charging, got your always on display. This is a certified flagship phone. If you got a G6, upgrade, get a G7. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready, no meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat, Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I see y'all in the comment section early, hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing, I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, Close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Enterprise, Spock here. Spock, one to beam up. Run, Captain. Enterprise out. Energize.